Hi, Jeff here. And um, I'm at Zaytuna Farm in the food forest. This is one of the older food forest sections here. And it's been really interesting because we're actually in transition here into an eco community. And people are moving in and settling in different, at, at different speeds and, and different fatigues. And, and there's all kinds of maintenance and lack of maintenance around the farm. We've established so many food forests here of all different sizes and all different ages and all different combinations. And now it's kind of a rest period. A lot, a lot of maintenance going on in the general common area. A lot of big food forests are in the common area. And it's I find it really interesting to see how they sort of handle themselves. Um, very little attention and um, they kind of stretch out and nothing really dies, nothing goes wrong. Um, and you can really see how much biomass they build. I do, I do work in the food forest every day, um, but I just come in and, and, and cut goat forage at the moment, but it happens to be the right time of year to do chop and drop. So I'm chopping and dropping some and taking some for food for my goats and my Nigerian milking goats. So I'm involved every day and it's a great time of reflection just to look at it and, and, and see what it looks like as, as a truly wild system in position. This is one of my favorite tracks here. It goes right on through from almost my old straw bale house right the way through to the education center. Let's go for a walk and I'll show you what it's like. It's kind of like a wild woodland actually. It's got a beautiful feeling to it. Um, guavas here, they're coming into fruit right now. We're going to have a massive guava season. <laughs> I've been making a lot of guava vinegar. And, and there's odd things everywhere. Um, here's some GAT, which is used for herbal remedies to bring your metabolic rate up. But it's also a drug plant actually in Yemen and Ethiopia and other places. But I use it for homeopathic medicine. And, and this is, this is, it's not male marijuana. It looks a bit like male marijuana, but it's not. It's mugwort. It's uh, Artesomia vulgaris, which is a vermifuge um, and has many, many uses. It's used in dream pillows and it's a great plant to feed your animals to worm them. It also makes smudge sticks from the dry material. It rots really, interestingly, very pungent smell. A very interesting plant. It's an anti arthritic herb if you take it regularly, very bitter. You can make bitters out of it. There's all kinds of herbs. There's an interesting black locust here, great big pods and big spikes too. Not many of those, because so many spikes. Native lily pilly. And uh, there are many bunya pines, giant bunya nuts all the way through here. And uh, lots of mango. There's the odd jackfruit actually. And uh, lots of understory of coffee. There's mulberry, Tipuana Tipu. I'll show you Tipuana Tipu as a pollard. There's lemons, quite a lot of lemons. And, and lemons are, uh, are on right now. They're just coming through. There's, uh, when I look through, there's windows I can see. Loquat, quite a big gua, uh, mango at the back. Always mulberry. Um, and uh, custard apple. Lemon, lemons are coming here, look, little lemons on everywhere. And uh, bamboo, little avenue of bamboo. I remember we planted this because it was a bit wet here. Hard to imagine now. Casuarina, which fixes nitrogen with a Frankia bacteria and phosphate with a mycelium fungi. And, and I, I'll show you, I put, I put climbing yams up these and, and kind of suppress their growth with an edible root crop climber that comes down in winter, but goes up in summer. And boy, it's going up now. Coco yam as a root crop. Ah, oh, there's all sorts going on in here. It's kind of full of surprises. Most of them are food. Some of them are support species. There's the odd banana here and there, getting a bit shady for bananas. And um, it, it's, it's just an interesting thing to walk through. It, it literally feels like a wild woodland you could maintain it a bit more. We do, we do maintain where we have more people involved around our camping shelters. 
I think it'd be a bit scary to camp in here for some people. It's kind of so wild. Uh, we manage it a little bit more manicured around our, our camping site. Here's our climbing yam. It's really gonna bully this little casuarina here. That's all right. Some things need to be bullied in here. It's so rampant. It, it, it's really controlled by rampancy. And we have so much organic matter it's in surplus. Our first surplus, organic matter. I think it should be everybody's first surplus, really. Um, oh, climbing cactus, the dragon fruit. I've got them going up a lot of my Tipuana tipus, which is our, one of our great legume trees. Um, and uh, a key apple, that's kind of rare, South African. Um, interesting stuff, arrowroot, the red flower. It's got a root crop, plus it's great animal feed. Fijoa, fijoas are coming on now. There's little fijoas everywhere. Pineapple guava, great little fruit, wonderful little fruit. And uh, here's one of our custard apples. Oh, Braz Mexican tree fern, they just look like a fern. It's actually Schizolobium, it's a legume tree. It has a very, very sticky top, almost like a flypaper glue. Um, one of the fastest little rockets out of the ground. This is a small one, I've got some big ones. On you go, just wondering and wondering what you're looking at really. There's uh, unusual legumes here. This is indigo ferra, which is uh, indigo, the, vo the, the dye. But there's about 800 in that genus. This is one of them. And uh, yeah. You won't starve in here, but you won't eat the same thing every day, that's for sure. You're eating something different every day of the year. Um, this is uh, climbing yam. Um, <laughs> this must be a pretty big one. It'd be huge yams under here. There'd be kilos and kilos of yam here. This is gonna go right over this casuarina, totally suppress its growth. And I think that'll make it fix more of its Frankia bacteria nitrogen and possibly phosphate from mycelium fungi. And then this dies back in winter, comes right down to the ground, the roots swell up, and that's when we take our, our, our yam. But it's a perennial, we'll always miss bits and it'll come again every year. Something I'm playing around with. And then we'll vine, root crop, rampancy. Interesting stuff. But let's walk on through and I'll show you another little avenue of food forest that's been tidied up to make it a little bit more, let's say it's a little bit tamer for our students to feel comfortable sleeping in the camping shelters. Let's go this way. And uh, areas actually right here, there's areas I've been working on in today. I mean, this morning I was cutting you can see I've cut here for goats and I've cut in here. And as soon as I cut, I'll be cutting there tomorrow. As soon as I cut the large ice cream bean legumes out, I open the light to the fruit trees. And um, this is our rainy season. Now it's just starting and that's when we can open up. It actually might rain soon actually. This afternoon, typical tropical summer rain coming. But there's a lot of spaces opening as I just harvest for goat forage and chop and drop to feed the soil. This is uh, the pleasure of food foresting. I think you can get lost in the food forest and just sort of like fiddle around for the rest of your life, just mucking about with stuff. Um, there's a whole load of pollard here I've cut in the last few days, opening it up, more sunlight coming in now, opening up that section. I'll just keep taking out the large legume trees down to a pollard and uh, they'll all come back over 12 months. If I want to remove them permanently, I'll cut them right off at the ground and abuse the stump and I won't let them grow any leaves and they'll die. So, uh, I'm going to teach a course on the specifics of working, walking, working and talking about food forests. And I'm going to get out there and do a bit of work with students and 
also sort of cover the philosophy of it all and um, what it feels like to create these systems and live in amongst them. There's one right here with a giant albizia over the top. That's kind of a classic. It's got tree tomato over there, tamarillo and, and European sort of fig. This is like a little show pony of food forest right here. Another little interesting section, but let's not get distracted. Let's go and have a look at the tidy system over here. So when you go through this bamboo avenue, you actually slip through a sort of bamboo reality wall over a swale, because we're going over a crossing pipe here. And uh, we're in amongst campers and camping shelters. This is part of our accommodation system. And um, here, we've cut back the Singapore daisy and it's, uh, we've tamed the system. And it's the same stuff. Oh, there's a pecan there. We have a lot of pecans actually. That's the pecan nut. Um, they're deciduous in winter. They lose their leaves in winter. So here, it, it's a trimmed ground cover and uh, immediately it looks a lot more respectable. <laughs> it looks tamer. And uh, you know there's not too many dangerous animals lurking in the understory. This is what our tipus look like when we cut them and they come back, the pollard. All of this grown in one year. Be cutting this one soon. A lot of the legumes are cut right back at this time of year when the rain comes. So when the rain, rain is higher than the evaporation. So rainfall higher than evaporation after a period when evaporation is higher than rainfall. Brazil cherry, I missed that one on the walkthrough. A lot of Brazil cherry in the system. Um, there are some clumpers too. There are quite a few clumpers, even flowering clumpers. I've got red hot poker here. This is a beautiful flower when it comes up. And I've got citronella grass clumps here. And, and a big pollard there. That's all grown in one year, believe it or not. Because this is the time of year we cut. And, and it's, there's an open space here with a mango ready to fill that, that position. So you don't have to have wild looking food forests. You can have them looking quite tame. You can have a heavy maintenance schedule and a high production or a low maintenance schedule and a casual production. It's completely up to you. There's many ways you can do it. And I, I, I think I really need to help people understand this. It's one of my missions because everybody loves a food forest.